um, uh, my friend Kate Judge and I set up a community group called We Are Bedford and we did um, a number of empty shops projects around the town and from that experience it became obvious that there was a quite a lot of cultural activity in the town that wasn't really being reported by the traditional media. Also there, was a, there are a lot of businesses, events, people, places, things that go on in the town, again, that just fall under the radar. So it seemed to me that there was a really big gap in the market for a, a publication that would fulfil kind of like a fanzine, a listings guide, kind of the idea of it was a bit like the Guardian guide, a little bit of viz, a little bit, um, a little bit of time out, but something that's kind of quirky and cool and something that Bedford deserves really. And then you just... <clears throat> so I just said, oh, so yeah, so in 2000 and... So in the summer of 2011, um, with not really much of a thought about what I was doing, I just decided to set it up, which I did, on a shoestring. And luckily, loads of people in Bedford really got the idea, really got behind it. And um, we're two years old now. It was pretty crazy at the beginning, but we've got into a bit more of a... Two years down the line, we've kind of worked it out, and yeah, things are getting easier. It's getting um, we're more established, and it's it's still a bumpy ride. It's yeah. still uh, it's still kind of every month is oh, how's it going to go this month? But you know, that's the that's kind of the thrill of it, really. I wouldn't like it if it was predictable. But that's the beauty of it because no issue's the same. Mm. There's always new stories. There's always new things. I'm always meeting new people, like you know, even meeting you. You know, it's you're always meeting new people. And it's what, how can you not love doing that? <clears throat> if you were to put a like one of those lonely hearts columns in a newspaper, <laughs> would you describe yourself in that? What would you put? Um, <clears throat> Evangelical Bedfordian. <laughs> Am I supposed to say Sikhs? Evangelical Bedfordian Sikhs. <laughs> Similarly obsessed individual. I am evangelical about Bedford. It's quite embarrassing. Evangelical Bedfordian Sikhs, like minded individual, to tell the world what they're missing about our town. G S O H. <laughs> Non-smoker preferred. <laughs> is that awful? <laughs> that is great. Um, I'm pretty scared of dangerous dogs. Oh, so like, uh, like rock wires or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Really, really, that's my, f yeah, that's my main fear. Not so keen on heights either. Um, letting people down probably is another thing I don't, I'm pretty scared of. Um, but that's quite good because that kind of keeps me going mm. with doing with doing this. Is that a joke? No. <laughs> it's got about a thousand of <laughs> what, what are some of them? Uh, I do quilting, I do um, sewing, I make that. Um, I do sewing of all kinds, I do origami, I do, um, I suppose writing is a hobby. Um, I like going to the theatre, I like the cinema. I love reading, I love um, cooking. Yeah, yeah, loads. I used to play guitar, but I'm really not very good. Have I met anyone particularly famous? Yes, yeah, so I used to work at Harrods um, department store in the press office. Um, so I met quite a few famous people when I worked there. And when I did PR, or um, I used to do PR for Fred Perry and Ted Baker, I met a few famous people there. So. Probably, yeah, probably my best. My, my best is probably Robbie Williams, including a kiss. Another highlight, um, Anton Deck. <laughs> Another highlight, Anton Deck. But when they were PJ and Duncan, so they signed the autograph PJ and Duncan. Met Oasis, I met with Oasis for a bit. Jane Perone, who is the gardening editor of the Guardian newspaper. She writes for the claim, so obviously her area of expertise is gardening, so it makes sense for her to write about that. Stephen Bywater, who writes about food, that's his area of expertise, so he sticks to that. Paula Walker, who's a really good contributor, 
and she's up for she and I kind of talk about things that are coming up that month and then we decide between us what would be suitable for her her to cover um, <clears throat> so it's kind of a very much sort of a collaboration between you know I'm very open to people coming to me with ideas I'm also working with a girl called Sarah Cowley who's part of the um, <coughs> who's within the YMCA organization and she's our editorial intern at the moment um, which is part of some work experience that she's doing at the YMCA um, and her life experiences make her suitable suited to writing about um, things like well things like her experiences within the YMCA homelessness that kind of thing the things that she's passionate about raising awareness of so that again that's another different kind of strand there's something for everyone in the Bedford Clanger so it's very difficult we don't have a particular demographic because I would like to think that it's as interesting to um, a teenager as it is to someone in their 80s I think um, that's the beauty of our town there's so much going on there's something for everybody my biggest Sort of I'm going really. I'm going because I think my children are probably I say is my biggest accomplishment because they just never cease to amaze and amuse me. And it's kind of different every day and they because there's I've got boy and girl twins who are five, so there's much room for hilarity. Um, and the, as they get older and they're their own people and they say things and you're like, mm, you're quite funny, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I think that's, and I hope that I, I mean, I know my husband will be a positive role model for them, but I hope that I am a positive role model for them in showing that you can combine being here at home with them, but also working and hopefully creating something that, um, Hopefully the work, this work that I do um, enhances other people's lives and I'm hoping that the stuff that I do at home enhances their lives, so yeah. God, this is when it's going to be so patently obvious that I don't like anything modern. Um, God, or anything cool. Um, I love Saint Etienne, I don't know if you know Saint Etienne, no, see I don't. I don't like, I don't really like anything from the 21st century. Um, I, I like, I love Saint Etienne, I love Prince, I love, um, I do like Beyonce, I love Lisa Van Dross, I love Lisa Van Dross, and I love kind of soul and funk. You won three mil on a lottery, okay. what would you buy? Okay. Right, well there's an uh, there's an empty derelict pub at the end of the high street called Porter Blacks. So when you drive down the high street, that's pretty much the first thing you see when you drive into the high street. So I would buy that and I'll do something with it. I would put some really amazing graffiti on the outside of it. Like welcome to Bedford people. I would do I would May, I, I don't know what I'd do inside. I'd probably ask people if they wanted to do stuff inside it, but I would transform that. And then I would, um, yeah, I'd do stuff in the town, I think. That's really pathetic, isn't it? Oh. I'd go on holiday. I'd go like, on a really amazing holiday, and I'd pay off my mortgage, and I'd take my husband away somewhere amazing, and the kids would have nice stuff. But after that, by a port of blankets. So um, after all the stuff you made. After all the me <laughs> stuff, yeah. <laughs> after all, yeah. And then I do, yeah. But I've got, you know, I've seen these amazing street lights that are like big lampshades that I just know would look so amazing down Lime Street. Mm. But who's going to pay for that? Mm. That is true. My lottery winnings. Let's go down that list. I'm just going to, yeah, I'll just become like a philanthropic <laughs> benefactor for Bedford. And then they'll um, make a statue. And then they'll make a ma massive, massive statue of me. <laughs> Next to, yeah. Next Over, to John Bunyan. Overshadowing John Bunyan. Bigger than, yeah, like that. <laughs>